if you listen to this podcast, you're going to have, you're going to learn something, you're going to pick up some ideas, you're going to pick up some tips that are going to really help you out with your progress in training. Uh, let's get ready to rock I am the greatest. I have brought to an alligator. I don't touch a little bit. I don't handcuff lightning through under him, baby. Joshy. Habib. How are you, mate? Good, brother. Good? Good, mate. Going well, mate. Back on the mic. Hello everyone, how he's going? Hello, for those that are watching on YouTube, can you see the new uniforms? They haven't come live yet. Mate, these are these are my favourite out of the, the lot. These are good. Favourite favourite uniform? Easy. Even though they're sleeves? Oh, mate, I am fond of a sleeveless shirt, but no, this is good, man. I like it. It's Josh, nice. before we continue, you're going to have to talk into the microphone, mate, okay. because you're giving me... Um, How's that? Yeah, oh, they're better? Yeah, listen to that voice. Yeah, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, um, obviously it's, it's time to jump on. Yeah. Um, just have a chat about a few things. Put a um little poll out there, um, a few weeks ago to ask our, you know, our community what they would like to hear us talk about on a, on a podcast. What yeah. information they'd like, and we got a fair bit back. Was that through the email? Yeah. Put ah, a, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Forget that one. No, no, no. I was just trying to work it out because I like all this. I like what we're going to talk about, mate. And I was just trying to work out. And I just remembered it was the, um, yeah. I didn't know whether it was like social media or whatever, but definitely, man, it's good. Yeah, I put out a um, little survey to everyone. Yeah. Got some feedback about our service, a gym, yeah, you know, our product, and yeah, what they'd like to hear about. Mate, so I reckon it's awesome. We've it's got fantastic. some, um, we've got some. Pretty good topics. Yeah, man, definitely. These are these are spot on. These are really good. And I think one thing that I reckon I know is very important is that if you listen to this podcast, you're going to have you're going to learn something. You're going to pick up some ideas. You're going to pick up some tips that are going to really help you out with your progress in training and life. Yeah, for sure. Definitely, mate. We're in a um like a two week testing phase at the moment. Yeah. Um, I know yesterday. Yeah, yesterday. This is Wednesday at the moment. We yeah. had um our Overhead press or military press one RM saw some awesome results over the over the four gyms. Yeah, and um, but also had a couple of people saying that they didn't progress how they lo- how they would have liked. Um, I know had a, having a chat with Vili and a couple of other coaches. <clears throat> um, when we did get that feedback, that we put, you know, two and two together in most of the cases, and it was a case of overtraining. Yeah, right. You know, um. I th- that's why I think the first topic it will be to talk about is overtraining and possibly training for a specific goal because everyone has a has it or not everyone but you know people have different goals mm-hmm. and ideally what we are um, delivering through our service is a general physical preparedness program you know preparing yeah, you definitely. for for everyday life so you perform better so you feel better etc. Yeah. So yeah, like. You, I'll let you lead this one, mate, if that's okay. Talking about... The importance uh, of not overtraining? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's... You know, like, there's, it says, there's also another thing called overreaching. Yeah. And, and you're probably so... And Troy, like, and most people that would have been around um, any type of athletic preparation, say, for instance, particularly someone like... Okay, so I'll give you two sports, right, that, we, that a lot of us know. Boxing and rugby league. Yep. Rugby league would have to be one of the hardest because you've got to play 18 to 26 games in a season, particularly at the highest level. So you imagine trying to keep your athletes in tip-top prime condition, peaking, so to speak, for 26 rounds. I mean, you, you, were, around the, you were around the boys in England on the World Cup tour. Yeah. How hard is it to do it with, with rugby league players? It's very, very specific. Very there's, specific. There's just as much t- 
time goes into recovery and prep for training than That's it does it. in training. And training is monitored very, very closely through yeah. the GPS. They do the GPS, yeah, and you would have had more experience around that than I, than I would have at the moment. But, um, yeah, so it's... And then, and then, and then, overreaching is is where you you intend to push yourself to that point where you feel like you might have done too much. But then, what you do is you back off. So, particularly with a, a combat sport, to so say like with boxing, ideally, what you want to do is you might have like if you got the luxury of having an eight to twelve week prep, prep. Yep. you can make sure you're you, you're ta- you're you're adjusting your training throughout that period to match what goals you're trying to achieve and then as you come into that final couple of weeks before you weigh in and have your fight you start to you taper off and you start to deload and the thing about it is until you've actually put your body through that it's we we can sit here and tell you about it but the feeling is outstanding like you've been at such a high threshold of training that when you bring it back down a little bit you're jumping out of your skin. You actually so by by the time you weigh in, you've had to you've had to not eat for maybe 24 hours before weighing, and then by the time fight fight time night comes around, if you do it all correctly, you're you're gonna really be able to display all those physical qualities you've trained for and everything. So yeah, yeah. So but it's a tough one because you know we want to make sure we manage like you know everyone's training loads correctly and all that type of yeah. stuff. So I think we do a good job of it. Try with VT, I believe so, and I know a lot of it's down to the programming. Yeah. Um, with the, with the programming, obviously, <clears throat> the way that I looked at it, like when I was analysing yesterday, shit, is my program working? Like, I've done and you know done all the research, I've put all the testing in place, doing it myself ahead of time, a lot of the time, yeah. making sure that I'm not overworking certain muscle groups, and making sure that if we're working, for example, a strength lift, that we're we're not going crazy in the in the conditioning before we jump in there. If people start with the conditioning round, so Definitely. so then there's a the the ability for people to actually get the maximum out of their strength work, and also have the ability to to progress and have longevity in their training. Yeah. So, like yesterday when we had the, the conversation, me and a couple of the coaches was like, well, like we're delivering a deload week before we do. You know, our before this week where we're doing our military press and also our deadlift one RMs <clears throat> with some potentiation beforehand. Mm, great idea. But if people are truly having a deload week, is it a deload week if they're doing back to back classes? Is it a deload week when they're when they're not listening to the protocols or the the programming that's that's delivered to them and they're trying to go heavy all the time, or they they're not actually Deloading by overloading, mm. you know. So some people might progress, some people might not. Everyone's body's going to work differently. Hundred percent. But in saying that, there's there's a thing that I read in in an awesome book called um, Atomic Habits. You may have read it. Um, there's a there's a um, a thing called the plateau of latent potential. Mm. Now a lot of people see that or expect that when they're training that Progress is linear. It's gonna you're gonna start at one point, and each week you're gonna kind of keep improving, and you're gonna keep improving, and you're gonna just get to a point where you keep imp- you you know you, where your where your goal is essentially. But we all know through training and no way. the way our body works, it can't be like that. No way. Like progress is up and down. You know, it's like a Richter scale when you see that scale from the stock markets or. You know, like that, that graph that just goes up and down. Yeah, if you are consistent with your training, over time you're going to progress. But some weeks you'll feel stronger, some yeah. weeks you'll feel more powerful. Some months. Yeah, exactly, know, some yeah, months. Yeah. But being consistent, you will progress over time. So it may be the fact that some people just have an off day or an off week. Definitely. You know, but definitely for people to get upset that they didn't beat their PB or even – equal their PB on a certain day yeah, is, I think, important that we talk about so there's not this, you know, disheartening effect throughout the community because they think that things aren't working. I couldn't agree more, mate. I could not agree more, Troy. I think it's, um, yeah, it's never going to be linear. Like your, your progress in anything you do in life is really, and I mean, we would even know just like as, as, as business owners, as husbands, as whatever, Nothing's ever going to be like you've got to like just sometimes sort of hustle and just get by. And 
And the same can be said with your training. So you're not always going to feel 100%, but that doesn't stop you from giving 100%. So even if you... Even if you overhead, you know, overpressed two months ago and it was 60 kilos and you only get 60 again. Yeah. Or you might do 60 and you really push it. Like, please don't let that um, think that you've failed over the last couple of months or you haven't made progress because I, I guarantee you you've had far more wins over the last couple of months than you have losses. 100%. And don't don't let it, yeah. So it's it's such a it's such a really like minor little thing. We test because we just like to keep the testing in there because. It is important to test. You know, it's good to just have a little marker and a measure against what you're doing, but it's it's nowhere near like the most important aspect of our programming Definitely. at all, mate. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Definitely. So I'm, I've, I really it, it does it really gets to me when people get really disheartened with that one little thing. They're like, oh, it's how you know, I've failed, or man, put that put that attitude out the window, out the front door, and you just think about all the good things you've accomplished yeah. and all the good things training is doing for you. hundred percent, man. Mm. Yeah, it's – it's um, we used to see it when we used to do a lot of body composition scans, you know. Oh, mate. People used to, like, walk out of the gym in tears or, you know, think that things aren't working because of, you know, a number on a, on a scan. Yeah, the scan can be used to track you over time. Yes. It, it's not the be-all – it's far from the be-all and end-all. Yeah. But – for someone to get disheartened with a with a number on the bar or disheartened with with a number on the scale or scan or whatever it is, yeah, you, you're 100 percent right when you say look at all the good things that came out of training. What about your yep. headspace? 100. percent What about your, your your internal health? You know, there's there's a million good things that come out of it, and you don't see those on a piece of paper. No, they're not the things you see on a piece of paper. You know what I mean? So you're not seeing. I always say, oh, let your training be your medicine, you know. So I know, um, um, and not that I suffer, oh, not that I suffer from mental health. I'm 100 percent aware of that, but no one's ever 100 um, percent on every day. You know what I mean? No one's ever up every day, and we've all been through our own battles in life. But I guarantee, I know for myself that if it wasn't for boxing when I was a kid, I don't know where I'd be in life. I know that boxing saved me, and then what what happens from there is that. You just you're just chasing you're just chasing that 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 better version of yourself you know and that better version of yourself is not going to be judged by a piece of paper that says you've got seven percent body fat or whatever <laughs> that better version yeah. of yourself is judged by that consistency that you apply to training yeah. to preparing your meals to to creating a better version of yourself and I truly believe you do that through the actions you take every day yeah. attending the gym being a good husband being a good wife like committing to your goals and they're the little things that you don't see on a piece of paper, mate, but they're the things that really matter, I Under, believe. Yeah. Definitely, man. Yeah, well I said, man. Things, that was a good nugget. I think, I, I mean, for me personally, mate, you know, I wish more people could see that too. Yeah. I wish they could really see it, mate, because, um, you know, look, I don't know, man, you just, you, you always sort of chase that little, that, that better version of yourself, but the better version of yourself can come about through doing that training session where you don't want to do it, preparing those meals when you're a bit tired, you know what I mean? Yeah. Mate, you know what, even – I know this is off topic, Troy, but one thing, we've got a new puppy at home and the puppy's been shitting everywhere. Oh. And me, it's a beautiful dog, by the way. <laughs> but me and the missus, we got the bleach out on the Sunday and I said to her, let's do the whole – I said, let's do the floors. Let's do the whole area. Let's do the whole floors. Do more. And I said, let's focus on the outcome because you're not always going to enjoy that process of cleaning – but the outcome's always worth it. Yeah. The same with your training and your health, mate. We're not always going to enjoy those training sessions, the over presses. We don't always buy into it, but I always believe the outcome is always worth it, mate, you know? Yeah. I couldn't agree more, man. So Is the dog still shitting everywhere? Yeah, it's only eight weeks, ten, nine weeks old. Nine weeks. It's going to be shitting everywhere for a while. She's cute, but... Yeah? What no, kind of dog? Little shit. It's like a... Um, I don't know, it's tiny, but, man, it's like a toy, toy poodle shih tzu. Oh, cute, man. Yeah, it's nice. Suits you. <laughs> <laughs> I can't talk, mate. We've got, we got a chihuahua at home. you got a chihuahua. This funny story before we go on. I was walking, <laughs> when I was living here in Botany, I was, um, had, I had Zeus. His name's Zeus, okay? So a big, tough name for a, little, for a little chihuahua. And we'll, it's about 10 centimetres high, isn't it? Yeah, like maybe, maybe nine now. He's shrinking. <laughs> he's getting old. <laughs> We were talking for a walk one day and I was on Botany Road walking him, I had a leash and everything and <laughs> Uncle Paul Neville drives past, <laughs> puts his window down, I'm in front of all the shops, there's people everywhere and he goes, hey, 
get a real dog. <laughs> and I was like, fuck, I just pulled my head down. So I've never walked him since. <laughs> <laughs> I've never walked in, mate, so <laughs> thanks, it Paul. It wouldn't be far to walk a dog like that, you know what I mean? They don't need far much walking. Oh, mate, he was buggered getting so to, the, ca- to, to the gutter. Little steps, <laughs> mate, little steps. Yeah. Um, mate, we've been seeing a lot of, and I don't know if you've been seeing, but I've been seeing a hell of a lot of people doing ice baths lately. Um, it's, mate, it seems everywhere. to be it, like the ice bath it's has been around. Month. Yeah, it's been around for, yeah. for God knows how long. Um, I remember doing them here in, you know, we did a workshop here and we were doing ice bars here about six years ago, you know? Yeah. Maybe about five or six years ago. Yeah, the, we Wim, the Wim Hof one we the did. Wim Hof one. Yeah. Um, it was good. It, yeah, it was a good workshop. But, <clears throat> mate, um, I wanted to talk. Obviously, that's one aspect or one, you know, recovery method. Um, I wanted to just have a chat with you. Obviously, like, we're pretty above it, both of us, but... Just maybe give our, our community, our listeners, a bit of an insight of other recovery methods that will assist it and when actually the ice bath is best utilised. Well, I mean, most recently you got to work with it a lot with the Lebanese rugby league side. Yeah. And I think one thing I wanted to ask you about that was there, there's obviously a big buy-in with it, eh? Like the, the boys love it. They love getting in the ice bars and all that type of stuff. Yeah, some of them. <laughs> Some didn't, so, no. particularly in England, it was it was freezing yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. So, what do you what do you think, mate? Like, what do you what's your ideas around it? Like, if there's a time and place, yeah. Defi- definitely a time and place for for an ice bath. I, I can see. I think a lot of um, <clears throat> a lot of people assume that it's like one of the like the greatest recovery tool that's out yeah. there at the moment. Yeah, but I think the benefits of an ice bath, personally. Um, mentally outweigh the outweigh the physical. The physicals, yeah, yeah. So like doing and something. So a placebo effect. Definitely. That, that placebo effect you're getting is can be very important, can't it? Yeah, for sure. It's like they say, like you know, foam rolling. You know, yeah. how, how many people or how many doctors, masseuses, physios, and say foam rolling does jack shit. But I love it. But foam roll, and when you get off it, how good do you feel? I feel fantastic. So if something feels good. And it place- and the placebo effect is giving you a benefit. Yeah. Would you do it? De- mate, definitely. And, and yeah, I definitely would, man. And for sure, particularly with that. But I think one thing we spoke about last week was um, like people pumping on um, the idea of a re- uh, recovery session, recovery this, recovery that, you know what I mean? When... I truly believe, bang for your buck, your best your best methods of recovery will be your nutrition, your sleep, yeah. and planning your training sessions correctly. Yeah. You know what I mean? So if you like like we just said earlier, or Troy mentioned earlier, not not training hard every single day, or not doing the same thing every single day, guys. So making sure that you you got a bit of structure behind your training program, which you do get with Valetudo training sessions, guys. So. If if you can focus on those three, I think that you don't have to necessarily chase a recovery session, so to speak. Not that I'm dismissing sauna, uh, ice baths in particular or anything, you know, because and I truly believe Troy's right in saying there's an appropriate time to use it. But um, even with saunas, there's a ton of scientific evidence backing the use of saunas yeah. in regards to the benefits associated with them: heat shock proteins, in uh, a boost in testosterone. Um, levels Growth after hormones. yep after you do your, your weight sessions yep, definitely um, even like detoxifying the body so you're sweating out a lot of toxins and and, and stuff out of your body and so there's there's get there's got to be some and contrasting was one of the first ones yeah. I ever picked up years hot, ago cold. hot and cold therapy mm. you know which is is fantastic but um, yeah I mean if I was going to say anything I would say use it at the right time yeah um, be smart with how you use it. Not that there's anything wrong with the guys, but if you've got nutrition on point, if you've got your sleep on point, and if you've got your training sessions um, structured appropriately, you don't really have to chase a recovery session, so to speak. Yeah. Not that there's anything wrong with it. Maybe you do, maybe you don't, but don't be so fascinated. Like, don't be so fixated on jumping in an ice bath just to get you ready for your next training session. Yeah. Don't let that get in your head. Yeah. Because plenty of people got by for a long period of time without them yeah, ice butt, yeah. and performed at exceptionally high levels. I think like f- a lot of people will be looking at um, 
you know, guys like Joe Rogan, like Tony yep. Robbins, that use the ice. So they should these guys are super oh, successful, mate. They're, they're unbelievable. Yeah, you know? but to definitely. look at to look at guys or you know role models like that that are actually using the ice bath for mental benefits so they do something that's putting their body out of the, its comfort zone yep. so then they so then when they go into high pressure situations or situations where they might not want to do certain things they do them because they've already done something hard for the day like jumping in you know pretty close to so, uh, zero um, degree water Yeah you know? man Definitely And I, I, I agree with that Troy too mate You know And I'm not trying to say It's right or it's wrong I just you know, I just question things Sometimes about Within this industry And the motives behind it And all that type of stuff yeah. But Look you know I think if you've got to Find what works for you mate You know And there's definitely Evidence to show That there is benefit oh, In all those Yeah I'm all, I'm all for it mate I th- like, like you said With that placebo effect as well Mate I think Definitely mate When you jump out of A cold shower Let alone jumping out of the ice how good do you feel? Yeah, man. You, you feel amazing. Feel you it's it's a, it's yeah. an awesome feeling. It's like knocking off a hard training session afterwards. Yeah. You, during it, it's not so crash hot. You're not feeling great, yeah. but afterwards, the feeling that you get, the endorphin rush, the tingles. You know, may, I think it's a it's a great feeling. Um, I know that there is a lot of um, evidence to say that if you're trying to gain muscle and you know through hypertrophy training that using the ice bath straight after yeah. isn't right. So if you're trying to ideally. get stronger, yeah, ideally. <laughs> so if you're trying to get stronger, put some muscle on, yep. after you've trained, if you jump in the ice bath to recover, you're actually going to detract from the hard work that you've done. Yeah, and that's what that's the, the evidence that's what's pointing to at the moment, isn't it? You know what yeah. I mean? It's saying that you're going to stop the process, you know, that, that that's – you know, because you want to induce a bit of damage into the body, a bit of yeah. stress, and let your body adapt and respond and recover from it. You know Correct. What I mean? So, um, yeah, and yeah, I mean that's what I that's why I sometimes just question things and look at it. You know what I mean? We're it's just so many we're com- we're just making things so complicated. Yeah. With our health and our performance and our recovery, when it it doesn't need to be. You know what I mean? You just got to simplify it all. Focus on the things that really matter. The you know. I don't major in the minors, you know what I mean, I think. But, look, I'm definitely a fan of it. I, I love it. I use it at the appropriate time, and I think it's it's great, you know. But I'm still not, I don't know, like, I'm still not sold on... On the uh, craze. Yeah, just on the craze. But I, I will tell you a quick little story I spoke to a fella about last week that I trained, and I'm, I've been training these these guys for about 16 years, and... It's the Lonsdale fellas? Yeah, the boys from Lonsdale. I, and I'll get on, I'm really... I Not Lonsdale anymore. Uh, give them a stateside post? sport. Stateside sport. Stateside sport, guys. For all your, you know, like all your basketball guys type of stuff. They're absolutely champion people. And um, so one of the boys was telling me, so these boys, they're uh, um, Aussies, but they're Jewish. So their family was in the Holocaust, was in the prison war camp, so that type of stuff. And so one of the boys was telling me that he's doing a, a detox diet and he's detoxing, you know, all this type of stuff. And I said to him, Mate, why are you detoxing for? What, like, what are you detoxing from? You, you've got to, you eat great food. You've got a fantastic lifestyle. Like, we live in a country of abundance. I said, what would you possibly be detoxing from? He said, oh, I just want to drop some weight. And I said, well, dropping weight is calories in, calories out. And I said, mate, without being rude or overstepping the mark, I said, could you imagine if your, if your relatives or your ancestors that were sitting in the prison war camp looked at you today in 2023 and they heard you saying you're detoxing in 2023 in a, when you live in a country of abundance with so much – so everything's going for it. What do you reckon they'll be thinking? They would, have, they would have killed to have a piece of bread to eat, mate, and you're talking about detoxing in 2023. I just – and he, said, he, he agreed with me. He thought that it was a, a fair point that I raised, and I just thought to myself – it just highlighted how much confusion there is around health, fitness, and, and actually getting results in life. You mm. – I don't think you need to detox from anything. I think you need to maybe just make some better choices with your eating. If you want to lose weight, you've got to make sure you increase your energy expenditure, decrease your calorie intake. Um, but, mate, yeah, just – and that's what I mean, Troy. So when you see all this, like, detoxing, ice bars, saunas, all this type of stuff, where's it all coming from? Yeah. You know what I mean? Is it coming from a place of actually really helping someone? When I can be honest, I can say, you attend a VT gym, you come do a PT session with me – I'm going to give you something that's super tangible. It's a, like you're going to work your ass off, train super hard, but you walk away with 
fuck it, like you'll be feeling better, you'll be looking better in a couple of months, you know what I mean? I don't know. To me, it just that makes more sense. Yeah, the big rocks. Yeah. We always talk ch- about yeah, the big rocks. the big chunks, man. I don't know. It yeah. might seem like I'm just sort of having a bit of a whinge or whatever, but I just – just stuff I think about. Yeah. You know? Stuff I think about as so a coach. I had a chat with, um, with one of the boys today. Actually, there was a couple of us talking and we are talking about – Performance enhancing drugs, steroids. Yeah. yeah, you know, and they're like, oh, you know, PEDs. Yeah, PEDs. Mate, yeah. I, I could, everyone's got their opinion on it. Yeah, you know, if it's it's called, and I'm going to give mine. Some people might not like it. It's called a performance enhancing drug. Yeah, if you're not working in a competitive sport, and you, or if you are in a competitive sport and you have performance enhancing drugs, ideally you're a cheat. I get it. You know, so I think there's a. But as if you get older and your body stops producing things like human growth hormone yeah. or testosterone and you just want to perform on an everyday level, not, a, not in a sport, just to yeah. kind of live a better life. 100%. It might be an idea. <laughs> it might be an idea to go see a doctor and try and perform better in everyday activities, not to come to the gym and be better in the gym or to look jacked or whatever. Nah. You know, but then we start. We went on to the topic of um, eating after six o'clock at night. Mm. Oh, should you eat? I said, mate, if you like, doesn't matter if you eat after six o'clock at night. Doesn't matter if you eat at twelve o'clock at night. If you're eating good food, eat good food. Yeah, you know, it doesn't matter if if you're not eating good, if you're not recovering good, if you're not training right, and you're not doing all the big things right. Eating after six o'clock isn't going to make a bloody difference, no way. you know. And that's what, like, all these. Everyone wants that little, that little hack, that little one percenter when they're yeah. not doing the big 33, 44 percenters right. It made exactly right, Troy. Exactly right, man. I, I couldn't agree more, man. And I've got nothing against anyone taking performance enhancing drugs, peptides, or anything like that. I mean, you know, to me, why not take it? If why not take advantage of it? You know what I mean? Why not take advantage of it and you can you can do it safely these days if that's your choice, you know. But um, yeah, it's completely up to the individual. You know what I mean? I think if you're gonna get some benefit out of it, and it's gonna make you feel better, perform better, and live a better life. Yeah, like perform your, op- you know, deliver an optimum performance to you personally, mate. Give it a crack, you know. You're right, mate. Like the the mate, a lot of people want to major in the minors without focusing on the the big chunks and their yeah. Consistently training, focusing nutrition, getting good sleep, that type of stuff. You know what yeah. I mean. And I'm a big fan of the breathing. You know the, the the breathing methods and all that type of stuff. You know that yeah. have been probably made famous by Wim Hof. You know. Yeah. I think there's a lot of benefit in that, particularly with your training and everything and recovery. But Speaking of that, um, we have been working with Ryan Millard. Yeah. Um, yeah. Over yeah. the over the last, you know, five, four or five weeks, he was doing a um, peak performance program for the yeah. footy players. And we will be actually secured some dates with Ryan. So he'll be heading out to, to each of the gyms to, to put our members and the community, if they want to jump into it, it'll be a small fee, um, through some performance breath workshops, which yeah. made the, the things that I've seen him do and the little tips and tricks that he's given to, to the footy players has been unbelievable. So yeah, definitely. teaching you how to get your breath back pretty, pretty quick, you know, in, a few, in just a, in a couple short breaths. And also um, how to build up your CO2 tolerance. So yeah. ideally when people are tired, when they feel like they need to breathe, it isn't the um, – or like if you, you know, you're diving and you go underwater, it isn't the lack of oxygen in your system, it's the build-up of CO2. So he teaches you some methods how to build that tolerance up so then you can hold your breath longer and you can perform longer. Yeah. You know, so, um, yeah, the – Will be ha- it's interesting, uh, man. Yeah, it is interesting. It's awesome. interesting. And, and then to finish off the um, workshop, we'll, we'll be jumping in the ice, which will be – he'll be doing some breathing in the ice as well to, to yeah, knock man, it off. Yeah, man, use it at the you. right time. Use the ice bath at the right time and for the yeah. right method and everything. But the breathing is, mate, that's a – that's a, that's Underrated. untapped, mate. Yeah, Underrated. man. Underrated. Yeah. yeah, really untapped, particularly when it's such a – delivers such good results like with – you know, even if, you, if you're playing sport, 100%, you've got to control, regulate – have good timing and rhythm, and if you're in everyday life and you just want to feel better, look better, um, even control your stress. I know I've been utilising it when I've been trying to sleep better, you know what I mean? If I wake up at night and I can't get back to sleep, I try this breathing, just box breathing is what I've been utilising, and it's like just, it's 
four seconds to breathe in, hold it for four seconds, four exhale seconds for out. four seconds, yeah. and then hold an empty uh, empty lungs for four seconds. It's really, it's really good for your stress and anxiety too. That big breathing. time, mate. Locks you know, breathing. helps yeah. you relax and go to you know help been helping me go back to sleep that type of stuff. But um, yeah, man, like it's I like I like that dude. That to me, that's makes sense. Yeah, Unt- natural, natural, mate. And something that you do every every day. We've been doing yeah. all our lives. So. And they say that like we just tell them mouth breathe, and if you mouth breathe, at least they're like like different health conditions. Number one might be like bad breath, you know what I mean. But then it might be like different gum conditions and everything. And then if you look at what's linked to heart disease, your gum health and your gut health are two of the strongest mm. links towards heart disease. So. If you can learn how to breathe a little bit better, not learn how to breathe, but learn how to breathe correctly for yeah. optimal performance in life, then why not? Yeah, I mean that to me that's a that's a pretty good reason to, to learn how to do it, you know what I mean? Improve your, your performance in, in life and everything. So nasal breathing. Nasal breathing, yeah, yeah. man. Yeah. A few of the boys at JITS talk about that a lot. Yeah. yeah. Well, Ryan was telling me, like obviously he's done all the studies, his degrees and everything on it. Yeah. And now he's now he's delivering some pretty high end workshops and talking about I may get this wrong, but you're saying like when you breathe through your nose, only nasal breathing gives you, like produces no, some sort of nitrogen. Nitric oxide. Nitric o- oxide, yeah. which is going to help your performance, which yeah. doesn't come from through, through mouth, mouth breathing. breathing. Yeah. So, 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 yeah. It's crazy, man. It is, mate. And that I find that super interesting and untapped a bit because it's like that, that could, that could d- definitely improve your performance in every area of life. You could, you could think better, you could perform better. So as even if you're just in the corporate world, you know what I mean. If you, if you you got a big meeting, you got something on like a, a big, you're trying to win a, a big gig with a with another crew, another mob. Imagine if, imagine if you you're outside and you focus on like a minute of breathing based mo- exercises before you go in for that big meeting. You know what I mean? Mm. You walk in that meeting, you're relaxed, you're on point, everything's you know everything's perform you perform really well. You know, so I don't know. You, to me, that makes a lot of sense, but. Yeah, man, but it's um, yeah, I can't wait to do the course. I can't. I'll jump in for sure and do that. Yeah, yeah it's definitely. really, really interesting. Yeah, man. Mate, I know. Um, another thing that you wanted to talk about um was was men's men's health. Yeah, um, and not only men's health, but I just think I don't know. You know, like just I just wanted to, like I said, I just thought that one thing we could do maybe not better this year, but I wanted to give people like a really actionable take-home points from each podcast, you know what I mean? Yeah. Something that if you implemented these things into your life, that you would get a direct improvement in what you're trying to achieve, you know what I mean? So I just had a bit of an idea, guys, and, and this is – look, I'm, I'm speaking as a man, as a father, um, as a husband, as a friend, as a business owner, so I'm just coming from a lot of different angles which – all of us or most of us are, but I thought that I just wanted to give his three tips. And this can be about anything. I think, number one, and I say this a lot, guys, I think establishing a really strong vision for yourself in life, you know what I mean? Like having a, a really clear view, a future vision of, of how you want to look, how you want to feel, and how you want to perform. Um and guys, I don't, I don't, I really truly believe, and I've always believed this is that success should not only be about how much money you earn. No, you know what I mean. Should, shouldn't be just oh, about the money you earn, guys. It's got to be semi like sort of, you know, living, marching to the bed of your own drum, so to speak. You know what I mean? Like yep. making sure that you just, you know, even if you're not in that position in life that you want to be in, it's not the exact point you want to be in regards to employment or how much money you're making, guys. Make sure you really just focus on a really strong future vision. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think and you're chasing it. Yeah, this like you can interpret success a million different ways. So many different ways, mate. I think success... But isn't it, it... Like people look at the car they're driving or the house they live in or anything, you know? It's... It means nothing. Means In the end, it, in the end, it really does, mate. Yeah. It means you know, nothing. I, I think success, for me... Is, is actually the process. Mm, and, I believe and, that with you too. And, and nailing the process, you know. Yeah. So, that like, I know a lot of people sometimes, like, we'll have a Christmas party or the games or things. We open a new gym and you get a pat on the back. Fuck, you should be proud, man. You know what? Yeah, I am. But it's not this. It's not mm. the actual, um, you know, the, the actual milestone that I'm proud of. It's actually the, the process. And sometimes I, I've nailed the process. Most of the time I don't. So I think, like you said, it isn't 
the car you're driving or the amount of money that you're earning, it's actually what you're doing on a day-to-day basis that is your makeup. Yeah, definitely, mate. That's yeah. that's how I attribute success. 100%. I'd agree with that with you, Troy, too, mate. You know, knowing you for so long, and I think it's true, man, you know, like success is found your little, win, little wins each day in it, you know what I mean? Like those little things you're doing each day, that's really success and ultimately that leads to the, the big vision and the better version of yourself and then... If you're just cruising, you're just getting by, and you're just thinking about, you know, the weekend, you know? No. No, you're missing out. Mate, that's, that's something that and I know that I admire about you, man. It's um like you, you have nailed like your your structure. If like from the outside looking in, yeah. You may have a different of course, um, mate. a different, you know, um, View on it because it, we all know ourselves better than yeah, anyone else 100%. does. But I do, mate. I do. You like I look. I read your um, blog on the, on the website about your nutrition structure. I look at how you conduct your day to day activities, and and for me, that's something that I aspire to, and that's honest, mate. Like yeah. you've been since we we're, since we we're teenagers, someone that I've looked up to, even though you're younger than me, because there's so much discipline with what you do, and you're so focused. It's it's actually it's ad- admirable, man. Yeah, I appreciate that, mate. Thank you. Did you see Jace did the 4x4x48? Four by four by no, did he? He did the, yeah, Jace the Goggins us. Challenge. Yeah, he did it. Did he? He did it. Jace. Oh. I don't know what's going on there. Give me one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he did it, man. He, um, yeah, Jace, he did the, um, Jace Cortez. Mate, you're oh, an mate. absolute legend. One of our mates living over in China. China Hon- he was in Hong Kong he training Hong Kong. a lot of the jockeys over there. But he set up his own gym now in China, so yeah. mainly in China where they're, where they're staying. And he did the, uh, the Goggins Challenge, man. He did the whole thing. Yeah, he's, he's, yeah, man. he's, he's on to it. He's a mate, he is, you know. But, yeah, you never – like, you, man, look, just, stru- just structure gives you freedom. Just quickly, do you want to tell everyone what the 4x4x48 four by four by is? So the four by so you've got to do four miles every four hours for f- for forty eight hours. Yeah, yeah. So it's David Goggins, who we all know, um, you know, ex SS soldier amongst other things. But he's got a little running challenge he does. So you know what? Actually, I, I just read recently. I just finished his second book, and he said that it doesn't always doesn't have to be just running. If you do want to do it, and I do have an idea about us doing it here. You can do you can do one run. You could do one section could be on a bike. The next one you could run. Then you could row. Then you could you could Ski, do it. Yeah. You could do it however you wanted. But you, if like imagine trying to do that, I'd like to do an event here one over the weekend. Yeah. Oh, not this weekend coming. I'll watch you. <laughs> Just get, let me let me get, let well, me watch you every is second base, is every quarters. every second for four so hours. So we do a four mile run. Yeah. You might do four hours on, on the uh, four um, miles on the on the uh, erg bike. You might do the ski. You might go for another run. I don't know. I think it's I think it'd be something good. Can to, we make to it kilometers? <laughs> <laughs> what is it? One point six k's every mile, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. So it's about six point. To yeah, it's 6. a fair 4, run. 6. 4. It was Jace was doing it in about thirty to thirty eight minutes. He yeah. did it towards the end. Still a good pace, man. He did he yeah. did well. So, mate, I was so happy and proud of him. He's a an absolute legend of a bloke. Hey? We've been yeah. mates for a long time. So, um, guys, the second the second tip, and I think Troy, I, I reckon you would agree with this one hundred percent. Is you've got to evaluate yourself. Yeah. So you've got to evaluate yourself in life, you know what I mean? And like you just said earlier about like, um, like about the structure, there's not every day that you're on point, you know what I mean? And I mean, the most important person to answer to is yourself. Like, can you look at yourself in the mirror and say, I am happy with the, my, my performance, I'm happy with myself as a father, as a husband, as a provider, whatever it is, you know what I mean? So evaluate yourself. How's your attitude? How's your, your personal pre- presentation, your self-management? Um, your resilience and persistence in life. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like sit down and ask your honesty, your health and fitness. Like sit down and ask yourself these questions and better yet, get someone that is going to give you an honest answer. Ask them what they think about it for you. Like some of you respect and some of you admire. Put it to them and say, tell me what you think. Give me a rating out of 10. And then you know what I mean? You look at it, get get the, the feedback. And then work at how you can improve it. Mate, but I think it's evaluating brilliant. yourself, yeah. Mate, that's brilliant. And, you know, what we did, a, um, I know we gave the staff a self-evaluation form not long ago or maybe a year or so ago. And it wasn't given to them to give back to us so we could have a look at it. It's just so you can reflect on yourself. Yeah. And it's funny you brought this up because 
Um, I spoke to our other uncle Paul, uncle yeah. Uncle Paulie Checker. Paulie Checker yeah. So um, like oh, I've been looking for uh, you know another business coach or mentor for a while. Yeah. I haven't really um, dived into it, and I had a chat with him a few weeks ago, and he came across and gave me a self evaluation form as well. And it was like yeah, yeah, I had yeah, to give good man. I had to um, so I've actually going to start working he with him me, on a month to month basis. Absolute legend. Yeah. If anyone does need um, you know a, a mentor or a business coach or you know a life coach or whatever paul is absolute legend yeah. um even ex- better better human being better human being but he's a fantastic coach ha- got special. a lot of business experience i started um uh what was that restaurant um i was gonna say mr wong's not mr wong's um i do not i'm sorry paulie i can't remember the top nah, of my yeah, head. i'll tell you um, what it is because it's a really famous china doll china Sta- doll, started exactly the china doll yes. restaurant yes. everyone that knows that awesome place he's yeah. at a you know, stack of successful businesses, but he gave me that form, and when I was filling it out, I had to rate myself out of ten for spirituality, for my relationships, my work, you know, the way that I conduct myself, and all these other aspects of my life. And yeah. then I had to write why I rated myself that. And I'm looking, I'm going, "Fuck, man!" You know, like it's confronting. Yeah, it is yeah. because <clears throat> the only thing that I gave myself a high score on. Was my creativity? Yeah, because right. I think I'm I, personally. I think I'm pretty creative with looking for loopholes to keep us open during COVID, or yeah, trying definitely. to figure out new um, things to keep the people in the gym interested, etc. Like I think I'm pretty creative with that. But the rest of my life, ideally, is yeah. That if you're looking at it, you would go fuck. This bloke's a mess, you know. So having that, having that. Um, you could you could look at that on the other hand, Troy, with yourself is that I'm hard on myself. Yeah, man, yeah. and I think you are, man. But there's always you you're of the opinion that there's always room for improvement. You yeah, know what defi- I mean? so definitely. I definitely. Um, I I know that I'm hard on myself. Yeah, yeah. I'm not definitely. saying you you wouldn't think I'm a mess because I'm <laughs> not a mess. But nah, man, no I'm way. just saying I think that there's like that you saying that um, having some sort of self management or some sort of Self reflection is yeah. is ab- is an absolute dime, mate. That's awesome. I think so, mate. You know, I think um, and being able to be honest with yourself is important, and then and then get someone that can be honest to towards you because you don't want a cheerleader in life, and yeah. that that might go along with being. I think we had a convo the other week about you now the person you end up like your life partner, you know, your wife or your husband. Like, how important is it for your success in life? It, it's it can be. Are largely based on who you marry. Yeah, you know what I mean. So if you got a, a good, like a, a good husband or a wife in your life who is going to bring it the best in you, like largely a lot of your success is going to be judged by that too. You know, so yeah, for sure. It's particularly if they need to grow with you. Yeah, you man, can't, you can't grow like alone. Evolve and grow. That's right, and be on that and and support you, and you got to support them on their journey. You know, what I mean, not just them support you, but no, definitely, man, and um. And then number th- number three, guys, was creating a daily success checklist. So, um, you know, I've been a fan of this for a long time, and you know, Troy's, um, you know, he's, he's known we've known each other for a long time, and he did say like since we've been young, it's been something I've really um, tried to apply to my life. Again, not all the time, but I the the reason I'm so big on these little things is because I know that they work. You know what I mean? So I know that. And they're they're bit they might be a bit boring for some people, but if you can apply them to your life either, even loosely, you'll get a benefit out of them. But you and I know um I know Andy Frisella made a daily success checklist popular recently, but yeah, with you know his with I mean? his fifty five tough pro, uh, yeah, 75 seventy five hard, hard program. Hard. <laughs> Let's give ourselves <laughs> a plug. Right. Fifty five tough. Don't worry about seventy five yeah, hard. That's worry, easy. Should be seventy five easy. Seventy five days too long. <laughs> <laughs> But, yeah, man, like daily success – so if you think about a, a checklist you can use daily, like I, I'll tell you four things, gr- training, uh, gratitude, relationships, and awareness, you know what I mean? And what I mean by that is your training, so your, your physical training, whatever you choose to do, yep. you know what I mean, doesn't matter, it's up to you, but whatever you choose to do. Gratitude, we all know that, being grateful for, you know, your friends, your family, the, the country you live just, in. Just touching on gratitude, like well, I'm sure you <laughs> – you know, what, what is the importance of giving gratitude? Well, 
Mate, you know what? And most recently, you've made me really aware of it. Even even Noah, Noah Sete. You know, yeah. I know he's he's been big on it as well since he did seventy five hard, and it just made me sort of sort of come back around to it. You know, yeah. But man, like think about it. You know, Troy. Like, why wouldn't why why shouldn't we be grateful? Like, we could have been born anywhere. Like, we, we could have been born any period of time, anywhere in the world, to any family. Yet we we're born in beautiful Australia. Two loving families in a country of abundance, mate. How wrong would it be of us to not be grateful with every single health. day with our health, with our health, mate? You know what I mean? Like, mate, get up and get it, man. Rip in and make the most of it. You know what I mean? Whatever you choose to do, make sure you give it your best shot, but and always be grateful. You know what I mean? Because being grateful goes a long way in life. You know, so I think it makes personally when I give gratitude in the morning, first thing after I read my goals. It makes all the other little trivial things like getting stopped at a red light or getting cut off in traffic Definitely. or not being able to find, you know, two matching socks in the sock basket with 45 yeah, yeah, people yeah. living in my house. 100%. And um, all the other little things that are so easy to turn your day upside down if you don't give gratitude, they seem trivial. Yeah, definitely. So mate. gratitude is, yeah, it's a, it's a massive one. It is, mate, you know. Goes a long way towards a lot of people's, you know, mental health and everything, mental yeah. fitness, so to speak. But how can you get upset at someone cutting you off in traffic or getting stopped at a red light, for example, which can easily ruin people's mornings? Mate, it can when, go a long way. When you're in a car driving yeah. on a road, going to a job in a good country 100%. where you're going to earn money, when people don't have that, like all of those luxuries, mate, you know? none of it. You get what's the red light going to do? It's going to put you 10, 20 seconds behind your day. Yeah. I mean, maybe, like a, maybe a minute. <laughs> maybe a minute. Yeah. Either way, it's not that important, is it? No. Nah. You know what I mean, you should be on. You should have left a bit earlier. Yeah. What are you? <laughs> <laughs> True. Um, relationships, I think, is very important. Yeah. You know, um, m predominantly with your family. I think first and foremost, you know what I mean. Like, yeah, you got to make sure those strong relationships with your family because. You know, I know for me, when I when my alarm goes off at 10 to 4 every morning, the people I want to make proud are my wife and my kids, you yeah. know. So, um, so yeah, so that's that's very that's very important to me. Like, and I don't feel like getting up at that time and doing stuff every day, but I know that um, it's very, very important for me to to make them proud. And um, and then awareness, you know, like awareness of all that type You're of stuff a bit as well. There, you? Yeah, man, I was actually because um, it was very important to me. Yeah, very important to me to make him proud. Kind of hug, bro. <clears throat> nah, not at all. But <laughs> just it was just it was um, it was something that um, was, you know, um, that's like um, yeah, it's, it's it's very important yeah for me to make sure that um, you know, look, I want I want my kids to be proud. I want my wife to be proud of me, you know, and um. That's that's be that's a big big motivator for me in life, man. So yeah, fuck, I don't even know why I, why, I, why I was got upset, but I did, man. <laughs> but it made me feel a bit upset just thinking about it. Yeah, um, man. I think I think that's a mm. that's something that attributes to your success, man. You know, well, like you like never, why you, do you never really feel successful, do you? No, you don't. But like, if you felt successful, what would happen? You'd probably sit on your ass and do nothing because you've you've made it. Yeah, I don't know. You know man. I think I it's the know. it's that process, man. You know, and that's why that's why you are the person you are because <clears throat> you've got a really strong driver behind you. You know, you've mm -hmm. got a two beautiful daughters and a loving wife at home. That yeah, man. Yeah, that's that, um, and they rely on you, mate. You know, they rely on you in life. Man, yeah. You know what I mean? So I feel, I, you know what, Josh? I feel the same because it's funny you say that. Like you got more people relying on you, man. Don't <laughs> worry, you got far more than, more responsibility than me. But no, you know what? But it's the same. It's the same responsibility. But I feel like I feel very um feel very much the same about the, the staff and the community here. You know, because I Definitely. feel like like. I don't just owe my family, which is, you know, of course a priority. Whenever, whenever I read my goals, it's always the family is the, is the top of the pyramid. Definitely. But everything else feeds down. But all the people that work for us here or work with us, mm. I should say, I don't like to say work for, they work no, with that's us. that's right. They work, we work together. Like I feel like I owe them the success of the business because they're in, as part of it, 
all the people that work or that train here, mm. you know, like where they de- they deserve to train at the best possible gym that we can give them with the best possible product. So yeah, no, um, that's true, man. Oh, I believe that too. Mate, having 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 good relationships with all of those people, in my opinion, is is um just as important as having a good relationship with with my relatives and my family. Yeah, man. No, that, that's uh, that's one hundred percent true, true. And I mean, you do a good job of that too, mate. You do a very good job of it. So I, I do believe that, mate. Um, but yeah, man. I think you know, like you, you know, you want to make moves in life that are going to pay off down the down the end too. You know, you want to try and do things yeah. that are going to be more beneficial for you, you know, yourself, but most importantly, your family, mate. You know, I think. But um, that's that's yeah. As I've got as I got a bit older, me, you know, and that even that was even one of the reasons I stopped drinking, Troy, as well. You know what I mean? So I could just make sure that everything was just focused around just being that best version of myself, you know what yeah. I mean? So, um, but yeah, mate. So, that I'd look, guys, I just hope those – I wanted just to provide you with three three really strong take-home tips you could utilise that will uh, give you better results in life and hopefully, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you all right now, mate? Oh, man, I don't know where that comes from. <laughs> I don't know where they come from. Just talking about my my wife and my kids, man. It just made me feel very emotional. That's beautiful. Yeah, man. man I'm very, yeah, very. I don't know. Anyway. And I think um, next podcast, maybe I'd better bring a tear on. Otherwise, I'll probably get knocked out by Clarissa and the kids when I go home. Because uh, not at all. My missus is gonna be. She's gonna go. You're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going. I couldn't help it. That's how I feel, man. That's yeah. how I feel. What can I do? You know, it's just. It is what it is. It is what it is. It is what it is, man. What do you reckon? That was good, brother. Leave it there? Yeah, it was good. Thanks, guys. Adios. I am the greatest. I have a dream. I'm coming for you.